so even though I quit filming regularly for YouTube, this is something I have to share with you. I veganized one of my favorite pastries. It's called Topfenkollatschen. I think it originates from the Czech Republic or Moravia, but it's one of the traditional Austrian pastries and I always like them a lot. And there's this place where we walk by with shadow in the morning and it smells so great. And I can tell that they're making Topfenkollatschen. And for weeks now, I've been thinking like, I have to veganize that. I haven't had Topfenkollatschen in over four years. Um, and I managed to create a recipe that works just as fine. It actually tastes exactly like Topfenkollatschen. So I thought I need to film this for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then please keep watching. Here we have the ingredients for our curd cheesecakes or Topfenkollatschen, as they are called here in Austria. So let's start over here. I have here two cups of cashews. I soak them for about an hour in water and I'm about to rinse them and I will throw them into the food processor. And then I have here one and a half cups of confectioner sugar. We will need a pinch of salt. Then we have here two tablespoons of cornstarch and one tablespoon of flax seeds two baggies vanilla sugar, one lemon, we will need the peel and the juice. Then I have here half a cup of raisins. That is optional. If you don't like raisins, you don't have to add them, but I like them because they add also an additional sweet note. And this is also optional. I have here quarter of a cup of a vegan vanilla protein powder. You don't have to add that. I like it because um, it adds a little bit more texture and it increases the vanilla flavor and the dough that i'm going to be using is going to be this one it's called the plunder teig here it's basically puff paste and then i have here the regular puff paste i honestly don't know what exactly is the difference between these two um, i think this one that's also used for croissants um, goes up a little bit more that's the only difference but you can use any regular vegan puff paste that you have and so that so that you see this one is vegan too. And now let's start with the cashews first. So now I'm just going to rinse the cashews and we'll throw them into my food processor. Now they are chopped very roughly, but that's gonna do for now. So I'm gonna add the remaining ingredients. So I throw in the sugar the cornstarch and the flax seeds. Let's add a pinch of salt and the vanilla protein powder and of course also the vanilla sugar. Now I'm going to grind in the lemon peel and I'm going to squeeze out this lemon and I will add the juice into this. So now I'm going to stir it and see how moist this is. And now you have a few options. You can add either two tablespoons of, let's say, coconut yogurt, or you can add more lemon juice. So I like the lemon aroma, so I'm gonna take an additional lemon and squeeze it out and add it to this. So I'm adding the additional lemon juice. Actually, I think I'm just going to add this to the thingy. And I'm going to just stir it now. And you can see that this is definitely more moist. I'm going to transfer this to another jar because I find that my food processor sucks and never makes it as creamy as I want it to be. So I'm going to use, in addition to this, a hand mixer. Now, obviously, if you have a decent food processor, you don't have to go into so much trouble. You could have just left everything in the jar of your food processor, edit all the remaining ingredients and let it run for a little bit. And that would be it. I'm still looking into a new food processor. I don't know which one I'm going to buy it. So if you have any recommendations, I would really, really be grateful for them. I felt that the consistency was a little bit too thick for my taste, so I added two tablespoons of this yogurt. It's a coconut yogurt, really tasty. 
and now the consistency looks like this so that's perfect it could be a little bit smoother but i feel lazy so this will do all right now back to business so i'm gonna use as i said the croissant and plume de teig as it's called here so i will chop the pastry like so in the middle and then i want to have small squares so i measured it and i can have in total eight squares by the way, I'm filming on my phone because I donated my entire film equipment to our friend Jordan, uh, aka Conscious Muscle, so I will link his channel down below. I'm occasionally editing videos for him. Uh, so, now I'll take the uh, vegan curd cheese and I'm gonna stir the raisins directly in. Again, you don't need to use raisins if you don't like them, uh, but it's my personal preference. So I'm gonna stir it properly. And now I will add one really full tablespoon of the mixture to each of the quadrants that I just made. And I still have quite a lot of the mixture left. That's why I had out the second pastry. So I'm going to make a few extra. Now what you want to do is to take the corners of each of the squares and put them together. I always like squeezing them together here in the middle like so and then um, I like also squeezing this so that the filling can come out Is to make sure that you really squeeze the paste nicely together because sometimes when you just do it a little bit sloppy they come undone in the oven it's not bad um, you don't have to worry about the filling running out because um, since there is the starch and the flax seeds it's gonna get a little bit more solid uh, but they still look prettier when they stay closed so it's more like a practical and optical thing, but it's not bad if it happens. And I'm pretty sure that some of mine are not gonna come undone in the oven, so it, it's not a big deal. Now I made two additional cakes with the other pastry. So I have here again one more square. I'm not sure how many I will be able to make, so I'm just taking it one by one. Um, these squares are a little bit bigger. And as you can tell, it's so much easier to fold them and they look also much nicer when you compare it with this mess, but um, they will taste just as fine. All right, so these are the eight curd cheesecakes made from the croissant and plume de teig pastry. Messy, but they will be fine. Um, that, that really does not look good, but, but it's fine. And this looks much better than uh, the regular puff pastry. I made a little bit bigger squares, which paid off because I could fold them uh, much nicer. And it's just six pieces. I think I've been almost too generous with the mixture here. So I think in total you could fill up to two and a half sheets of puff pastry with the amount that we mixed together. And now I'm going to put them in the oven. So I turned the oven on 365 Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And I will bake these for about 20 minutes and then I will check on them. And from my experience, the regular puff pastry needs a little bit longer. So basically what you wanna do is to see that they are well done, that the pastry will turn golden. And while the curd cheesecakes are in the oven, a little reminder that, as always, all ingredients are also listed down below in the description box. Alright guys, so this is what the cakes look like so far. So it's been about 20 minutes and you can tell that the croissant pastry looks a little bit more golden 
than the pastry, the, the regular puff pastry. I actually just switched the sheets so that these would be on the top. So the way they look, um, I think I'm gonna leave them in for about five additional minutes and then I'm gonna take them out and I will leave the regular puff pastry cakes um, in the oven for as long as it takes until they turn golden. today with this spontaneous cooking video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope that if you try these curd cheese cakes aka Topfenkollatschen that you're gonna enjoy them too. Both Jack and I love them. We usually take them with us when we go hiking with Shadow. Perfect snack, doesn't take much space and it just tastes so great and smells so wonderful with all the vanilla and lemon. It's just lovely. Anyway, I won't be a stranger. As promised, I will occasionally stop by with life updates or doggy videos. And one video that I definitely will film is about how I dealt with the loss of Hercules because that's been a really difficult time for me. I felt like a piece of me died with Hercules and I had a really rough time, but I found a way how to go through this. And I thought it would be really great to share this with you guys because I know that many of you have animals and sadly the one day that we all fear will come eventually and I thought maybe at least something of the things that I did so that I could go through this will be helpful for you. And that is it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Feel hugged. I'm sending so much love to every single one of you and see you soon. <laughs>